Good morning, Friday harmonica miscellanea. Excuse my <laughs> excuse my lack of enthusiasm. If you saw the video I posted on Tuesday, you'll know that I've been suffering from COVID this week. Tested positive on Monday, so it's been laying me down, and I've, it's the first time I've really felt that I can get up and start fiddling about with stuff. Before that, however, uh, at the weekend. Uh, I was in the studio with my friend Ben helping him or putting, recording some harmonica for his uh, album that he's written and now recorded. It was a great experience. I really had fun. And as always, when you play, no matter where, what environment you're playing in, you will learn something if you're paying attention. So I'm going to just give some very quick little uh, roundup of what went on. I'm going to talk about something in particular that I think is really cool. And I'm going to complain about my equipment. In fact, I think I'll complain about the equipment first. Um, I'll stick that bit here. I've been having a bit of bother with my pedal board at gigs and other situations. Lately, <clears throat> I thought I had it down to a bad interconnect cable. And I've even written on the cable saying it's bad, but I don't think it is. I think now that the problem is this. And that upsets me because I absolutely love this pedal. I use it for harmonica, um, acoustic and electric guitar. So it's important to me. However... When I think back over the issue, then the issue, by the way, that I've been having is sort of intermittent uh, signal not going through. Um, so it just would just cut to silent, which is no good at all. I've just recreated my board here today. I plugged it in. Everything's working fine. So <sighs> I'm wondering if there is a loose connection in there. Oops. Ow! Shouldn't have done that. Uh, but that's still fine. It's just baffling. And with it being an intermittent problem, and I've got to say, it's been a problem when I've taken it out and not re I have had it happen here. And again, that's where I got it down to that bad cable. So, I mean, what to do? I would imagine that the most obvious thing to look at would be the input and output jacks and make sure that they're clean and tidy. I've got some electrical contact cleaner, but I'd rather put in some of those that compressed air stuff that you clean keyboards with. And I don't have any of that around, so I might pick up some of that and give that a go. If it's not just dirt in the connection, it could be that a soldered joint's bad on the inside, which may or may not be a problem, or, or a huge problem anyway, or at least something that my mate John could probably fix. Um, but I don't really want to start pulling it apart because I'm really not smart enough to be uh, dealing with electronics. So. It, it's probably, I mean, I don't think it's broken. It's probably something really simple. First step, compressed air in there. I don't think contact clean is a good idea. I'm not sure why. I'm thinking I might just gunk it up a bit, but I'll give it a go. But the trouble is I can't even test it because here at home, everything seems to be working. I mean, the other option, I've got this little mini this cheap little mini delay pedal. I haven't actually tried a being them both. That one might be fine. It uses a lot less power as well. I might just try and see if that one works. But anyway, I need to fix my other reverb. So, nightmare. There is a um, a player uh, based locally, uh, a fiddle player by the name of uh, Kieran O'Malley, who's like. Famous, local legend kind of guy. Um, he plays the fiddle like like a demon. Total pro. 
anyway, he also plays with um, a friend of mine, John Burr, who's a, a fantastic Leeds-based harmonica player. Um, and they play together for uh, Boss Kane. And they're very, very good. Now, the first time I saw them play, I was very sceptical of how the fiddle harmonica relationship would work. And I was blown away by how well it did. My misgivings were that they're in quite a sort of similar sonic spectrum and they're going to interfere with each other and get on top of each other a lot if you're not doing loads of like worked out parts or seriously good communication with the person you're playing with. Now, of course, both Kieran and John are excellent musicians, so it didn't surprise me that much, but just the mix of those two sounds, because the harmonica sounds very stringy sometimes anyway, depending on how it's being deployed. So anyway, yeah, um, Kieran is also on this album. And when he came in on the Sunday to to put his, uh, to do his tracks, we recorded most of it live. Um, and he was, uh, I, went, I hadn't rehearsed with Kieran at all. He just came in cold. Um, and I said to him, I'm going to, I think I'm going to just hold back a bit and not, because I really don't want to mess about with your your fiddle parts. And he said, no, man, just go for it. And I'm like, doesn't it? I, yeah, I know that well, I've seen you play with John and whatnot. He says, oh, fucking go for it, go for it. I'm like, oh, okay. And blow me if it doesn't, it, well, on the play, but on the rough playbacks I heard on the day, it sounds really absolutely fine. It sounds great, in fact. This is not in a blues context, of course. This is in a sort of americana -y songwritery type space and it works man you just i mean i suppose it wouldn't if the two of you really weren't listening to each other and, and not paying attention but it's something i've always shied away from and now something that i think i'll be looking forward to doing again as soon as possible um it's an odd mix and obviously when the album comes out i'll be able to share sounds with you but I wanted to throw that into the ring harp and fiddle man it works I'm gonna go into a lot of detail on the recording process uh, choices and why I made them related to the harmonica lessons learned um, nice surprises etc in uh, patreon content so um, if you're nerdy enough to want that, Patreon's a place to go. Patreon subscriptions really help me out. I try and pump as much content into there as I can. I did want here, though, just to give a little roundup of a sort of just a reflection. Now we're sort of five or six days on from recording. Um, to very briefly wrap up, the project, Ben wrote a bunch of songs, got them all ready, so he's mostly happy with them, pretty much finished. Re started reaching out to musicians, so he got in touch with me and he got in touch with a fantastic local guitarist who I'd not met before, uh, called Sarah Ward. And it was just me and Ben for a while, and then when Sarah came on board, everything just lifted up a bit. So we did a couple of, pra like literally, two or three practices, and we'd done a couple of gigs, and then we've done one gig, Ben, me and Sarah, I think I've done three gigs now, just me and Ben. But he's like, right, we're off to the studio, so I think he'd always planned on uh, making an album. And he, it, because of Ben's uh, uh, job, what he does, he has um, easier access to a studio and an engineer and nice mics and all that business than most normal mortals do. So we piled into Old Chapel Studios, the three of us on Saturday morning t at 10 o'clock and started r set up in the live room. We recorded everything live, got the amp set up, the line checks and everything, played through a couple of songs. And then Dave hit record and we played a song a few times, went back, listened to it, picked the best take, right? On to the next one beautiful way of recording so much more immediate and exciting 
and with a lot more energy than the traditional way of like getting one instrument down first, typically the drums, and then the bass part will go on top of that. Then you start adding, layering all the tracks. That is just killer for me. It is so tedious. I cannot be bothered with it. Uh, it drives me insane. But this was actually the most stress-free and fun recording experience that I've ever had. I've been more nervous turning the mic on in my bedroom than I was sat there playing with these guys. So, you know, there's something to be said for that. But over the two days, I mean, it was just, a, it was just an absolute pleasure. The, the, everything went smoothly. We got good takes. And I think one of the reasons we got such good takes quickly was because Ben obviously knows these songs inside out. He's been living with them for a year. I don't think he did a bad take in the whole weekend, to be quite honest. Uh, we were out through, finished up with some... Kieran, Kieran came in on Sunday for a few hours and did the awesome fiddle work. And I finished up by doing some backing vocals. It, it, was, it was a cool, fun, good time. And I really hope that the energy and the, and the sort of positivity that was in the room comes out on the record. They're mixing it. Maybe even today they're starting to mix it. Yeah, I really hope they manage to capture that. I know that's something Ben's keen on anyway. So that's been the project. We've got more gigs coming up at the uh, towards the end of the year. Um, and I'll keep you up to date on this channel and on the Patreon as well. So um, sorry it's been a bit low energy today, but uh, that's me. <laughs> I'm still recovering. I think I'm going to have to go and have a lie down actually. But uh, thanks for watching anyway, and I'll be back next week.